بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa taala and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I testify that there is no god except Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is the prophet, the messenger of Allah, and I thank Allah subhanahu wa taala for everything that He gives us. And He is the only one that you thank. For a calamity that you experience and you face. And my brothers and my sisters, here we are tonight in this blessed gathering, getting together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. We are here tonight because of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we are here tonight because we want to remind each other of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we are here tonight because we want to accept the reality of all realities. Because sometimes we live in this world and we forget what's really happening around us. And we think that we are going to live in this world forever. But it comes those times where we stop and pause and reflect. Am I living in this world forever? Or am I? Or am I going to die one day? Because the reality is, whether you are strong or weak, healthy or unhealthy, diagnosed with something or not, we're all going to die one day. And we're all going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. And Alhamdulillah, tonight is a special night, a practical night of what we just spoke about right now, in which we have amongst us a special brother, and he's special to every single one of you, and he is more special to me because I've known this brother ever since he was young. And this brother had touched the hearts, not only us here in Australia, but all around the world. Across the world, people have been talking and people have been asking and people have been emailing me and people have been corresponding with me and corresponding with, corresponding with him and corresponding with other brothers because it really touched a lot of people's hearts, a lot of brothers' hearts, a lot of sisters' hearts. And one thing about this brother that really made him touch a lot of people's hearts is when he said that word which the Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us but it does not really cross the mind of many of us that I am gifted with a calamity. Because this gift, if you are diagnosed or you are ill with such an illness that you did not bring forth upon yourself, you didn't choose that. No one chose that. And our brother Ali did not choose that. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him recovery and give all Muslims and everyone around the world who is experiencing any illness recovery. No one chose this upon themselves. But I accept at the end of the day, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah azza wa jal had accepted for me, so I'm going to accept this for myself. And that's why one of the most important phrases that touched a lot of people's hearts around the world is when Brother Ali said, I am gifted with cancer. And this is something only a Muslim can understand and only a Muslim can ponder and contemplate. Because a non-Muslim or someone who is a disbeliever cannot comprehend the fact that he has been tested with such a test. On the contrary, people rebel against their creator when they are tested with such a test. But this brother, alhamdulillah, he is a true Muslim. Why? Because he surrendered to Allah Azza wa Jalla when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with this test. And inshallah tonight, you watch a video, which I know most of you had already watched, but inshallah it's a reminder for all of us. So you watch the official video of brother Ali Bana. And then after that, you see some of the projects and some of the things that he's doing overseas. And then we'll have a one-on-one -on -one interview with our brother, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, once again, I do welcome every single one of you here to a special night with a special brother. A brother that, as I mentioned to you before, that he's close to every single one of us. And in particular myself, I've known this uh, brother ever since he was young. And from a young age, he's been coming to the masjid and he's been part of the da'wah, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we all know that tonight is a special night and we are here because we know what Brother Ali is facing and experiencing and encountering in his life. But let me make something very clear. Yes, if someone is being gifted or diagnosed with such an illness, the first thing that crosses your mind is that this person is going to die. That's the first thing that crosses your mind. And that's why you have more sympathy towards that person than anyone else. But let us make something very clear, my brothers and my sisters. You don't need a doctor to tell you that you are going to die. You could die tomorrow without any illness. I could die tonight without any illness. You could die tomorrow without any illness. 
You could be severe and healthy and you sleep tonight and you die tomorrow and this person who has been diagnosed or this person is feeling unwell, he'll continue living for the rest of his life. So my brothers and my sisters, let's not look at it in a way where this person is ill or this person has been diagnosed with this illness and I feel very sorry for them, in which we are. But we need to feel sorry for ourselves too. I need to feel sorry for myself. Because it's not about any illness, it's not about any disease or any sickness that I have to wait for for me to start returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about me being connected with Allah azza wa jalla regardless. I don't have to wait for a doctor to tell me. I don't have to wait for a doctor to tell me to diagnose me or a specialist to diagnose and say, okay, you've got this particular month to live or you've got this number of years to live. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in the Quran al-Kareem, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بَأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُودٍ No soul knows where it's going to die tomorrow. I'm living today, but I could be dead tomorrow even though I'm healthy. And I am ill today, but I could continue living for the next decade. Because at the end of the day, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that decrees when you die. So my brothers and my sisters, let's not look at it in a way where we are speaking to a brother who has been diagnosed with this illness, that we ask Allah Azza wa to give him a quick and swift recovery. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. But also, we need to look at ourselves. We need to look and reflect upon ourselves. And uh, as I mentioned, my brothers and my sisters, tonight we have a special brother. Brother Ali Banada, you just watched his video and you saw his journey, that he went to Africa not long ago. And inshallah, let us all reflect upon tonight for us to reflect upon ourselves and learn from the things that we will hear from our brother today. So Brother Ali, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullah. Brother Allah, Izzik al-Khair, sincerely, you did touch the hearts of many of us, if not all of us, and not only the Muslims here in Australia, but Muslims and non-Muslims here in Australia and around the world. And as I mentioned to you, and I'm sure I've sent you some of those messages that I've received of Mashaykh and people and brothers and sisters from around the world who are sending me messages because they know me, I'm here, and they know we're in the same city, and they're all being touched by your story. And alhamdulillah, I'm sure not only have they been touched by your story, but you've changed their lives. And alhamdulillah, your decision in which you made to go to Africa, to Toga, and by the way, you fit it in very well with the Africans, okay? But your decision that you made to go to Africa and uh, to meet your brothers and your sisters there and to engage yourself and to be a part of this humanitarian work, you went there because you really wanted to make a change in people's life. So brother, just a quick word, let us start off this inshallah. And again, it's not about you here, it's about us too. Because I need to reflect upon myself. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he does give you shifa. And I'm confident inshallah, bi'ithnillah ta'ala, with the great work that you are doing, and the sacrifice that you are sacrificing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you shifa inshallah. So brother Ali, Ali, just tell us what you experienced so far. How are you finding this? Akhi, okay, we're all from punch balls so speak the way you want to speak, all right? Hashtabilliyah, I know Allah formalities and that. Okay, how are you finding yourself? Like, tell us the first time that you, you knew about this. What was your impression? How did you find this? At the first time I found out about my sickness, I was, um, and I was shocked because the doctors were even shocked. The doctors used to make fun of me when I walked into the hospital and they used to tell the people around, this is the healthiest cancer patient in Sydney. So, um, and it's still a shock till now, but alhamdulillah, it's, it's given me a wake-up call and um, it's, it's brought me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. And uh, yes, I have to say, to me, someone, if I don't know anything about your background, I'll see you, mashallah, as a very healthy brother. And this is because of two. Maybe you are healthy and maybe because you're strong, inshallah. You are perseverant. And that's something that I have to say, that touched me. It touched me, and I know a lot of people said that, and a lot of people spoke to me about it. They've been touched with your perseverance, your persistence. Someone else with weakness of, uh, in their iman, or someone who's probably a disbeliever, they'll be so distressed. You could see depression on their face. But alhamdulillah, I see you a lot more happier than me. Maybe because I'm a sheikh, I'm depressed. But uh, I look at you, and I see, mashallah, on your face, and I've been... Meeting with you a lot of times the past few weeks and I've visited you and I've asked a lot about you 
And I'm sure a lot of people are looking and saying, MashaAllah, this brother is very happy, alhamdulillah. And this brother, it shows that this brother, not only he's happy because there's nothing that makes you more happier than submitting to Allah. To submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of the reasons that I'm happy, as I said in the video, um, you know, I was taking a medicine that was pretty strong. And um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me some things when I was going through a little overdose. And I'm trying to walk, work towards them things, inshallah. So I've seen a lot of things, but it's very hard to explain. Uh, I don't think the brain can, can take it in. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me a lot of things, gardens and stuff like that. SubhanAllah. So Give us more I'm... about that. I'm sure every single one of us is interested to know more what you're talking about. So with that, um, and I saw doors, I saw gardens. Well, I can't explain it, so it's too too hard to explain. And once, subhanAllah, once you see something like that, and even the brain doesn't want to, doesn't even want to let it out no more. It's just, it's too hard to to comprehend all that. No. Zakallah khair. Now watching your video, and uh, it seems like you had a lavish life, alhamdulillah. Your thongs is worth more than my entire wardrobe, by the way. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah. But, mashaAllah, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you that. And uh, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened that door for you, which is not a wrong thing in Islam. You know? We have to differentiate between this and that in Islam, that there's nothing wrong with me being, me being wealthy and having a luxury, lavish life, as long as I balance that with my religion. But with all this lavishness that you've got, that wealth that you've got, mashaAllah, as... Uh, Brother Muhammad mentioned some of, or you mentioned to Brother Muhammad some of those hats and glasses and shoes and thongs are worth in the thousands of dollars. What does all these ritualistic things mean to you? Because we as nat naturally as human beings, as human beings, we are naturally attached and connected to ritualistic things. That's why people always turn away from the Jannah or turn away from the Akhirah towards the Dunya because Dunya is ritualistic. We are attached to the materials of this world. So what does this Dunya mean to you now? Well, it's never really meant anything to me, but you know, I've always, maybe I've taken the hadith, the, the A wrong, but Allah Jamil Yuhibbu Jamal. Alhamdulillah. I've um, sort of stuck firm to that one. But at the moment, at the moment, to be honest, yani, well, like, if anyone was to give me anything in this world, it wouldn't mean anything to me. SubhanAllah, Zakallah khair. What would your advice be like a young brother, mashallah, a young brother that's, uh, that grew up here and obviously you experienced what other young brothers experienced in this dunya. What's your advice to those youngsters who always look up to the dunya and they just want fame and they want the materials of this dunya, they want more wealth and this and that. What would your advice be to people like that? What would you say to them? What would you say to this youngster that's sitting over here, this youngster that's watching you right now, in which you've got a lot of people live from around the world and this uh, video also, this interview will also be uploaded on YouTube. What would you say to these people who are just chasing behind the dunya? These people, who all, want, all they want is this dunya. These people, who all they think about is this dunya. What would your advice be to them? Alhamdulillah, my, for those who know me, my brothers, Allah is on, but they, they're and he's chasing this dunya day in, day out. Um, and they've had a lot of issues on the, you know, on the streets with people and making money and what's up. But you know, my experience is I've always believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the rizah. And no matter what you do, if it's right or wrong, halal or not halal, your rizah is shrewden. But it's your, you know, it's everyone's decision on how they want to get it and gain it. So. And before we were born, our rizat's been written. Whatever we're going to make is there, but we just have to work towards it and, and get it because no one can take it away from us. It's, it's, it's written. Jazakallah khair. Now we are called Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named us Muslims because we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that I find to be a struggle to submit is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine decree. Al-Qadr khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala. Look at the beautiful saying of the Prophet when he says 
that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the six pillars of Iman, and then he says that you surrender to the divine decree of Allah, good and evil. Good and evil both come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And me as a shaykh who always preaches about surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadar, always preaching about divine destiny, preaching about the qadar, al khair wa sharri. But, uh, and we always say that uh, it's very important that we surrender to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed upon us and so on. But the honest truth is, when it comes to the crunch, when it comes to the reality, it's not easy to implement. And I believe you are a great example for us to see someone who really surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Give us some insight on that. Give us some, something that you'll give me as an advice. You'll give those brothers and sisters who are listening to you now as an advice, ways for them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us in different ways. Allah is testing me with something, but Allah tests me with something else. And Allah is testing him with something else. And Allah is testing them with something. Allah is testing her with something else. Allah continues to test each one of us with different tests. So how did you endure this? How did you take this? That's, the, that's a very serious question to me because I preach a lot of that, but I know we're all weak at the end of the day. If we are struck with a calamity, how are we going to face that? After speaking to a lot of the doctors and, and listening to what they had to say, and even the non-believer doctors, they always used to tell me, you know, go home and spend the, the last time with your family. This is... That's all we can do for you. There's not much we can do. So once I started hearing stuff like that, and even before it, I knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the only, was the only one that can help me out and um, cure me, inshallah. So I just put my foot to aqal in Allah. And, um, and it is hard. I go sometimes to a place, sit down, I cry, and, um, from the pain, from, from what's happening. But never do I ask, like, do I blame Allah or say, why did you do this or why did you give me this? And I've accepted it because, as I said, it's, it's a gift from Allah. And he, I could have died driving a car or could have died at work or could have not woken up the next day. But alhamdulillah, he's given me the chance to, to repent. He's given me the chance to, to help people with, with my wealth or with the community. Now, one thing that you mentioned in this video that really touched and sparked a lot of thing, uh, a lot of people and sparked something in their mind when you said that Allah gifted me with a cancer. And that also inspired me. And a lot of people that I've spoken to that have said the same thing, that when you said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted me with a cancer, to a non-Muslim, to a non-Muslim, who look at you and say, what's this guy talking about? To a non-Muslim. Maybe even to some Muslims who have weakness in their Iman. But what do you see this as a gift? Like, give us a better understanding. What did you call this as a gift? Because in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, he did say, إِذَا حَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا ابْتَلَاهُ If Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala loves someone, Allah Azza wa will test him. But you said it, and you are probably one of the first people that probably ever uttered with something like this to say, Allah gifted me with a cancer. Like, when you look at it rationally, it doesn't make sense that Allah gifted me with a cancer. But uh, what, uh, how do you define that? How do you look at it? And like I said before, it's given me a chance to repent. Um, but and I don't know, it's, it's difficult. So to you, it's a gift. It's a gift because. And you, wake I don't up know. court to notice. So wake up court to notice. It's, it's a lot of things. Tab, since you uh, have questions, Zakallah <laughs> khair, yeah, alhamdulillah. It looks like you studied hard at school, anyway. So, um, okay, you say it's a gift. All right, Tayyip. Uh, alhamdulillah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did say, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, Allah azza wa will test him. And yes, when Allah loves someone, Allah tests him. And the believer needs to look at that as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not easy, like we could, I, I could talk about it, and that's why I respect a brother like yourself and your perseverance, your endurance when it comes to this, that alhamdulillah you've taken and said, you know what, even at a young age, I say alhamdulillah this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But brother Ali, do I need, like I want to get this advice for me, and uh, I think if we could touch on this point uh, in which I started with, 
that um, do I need to be diagnosed with something for me to wake up to myself and turn to Allah Azza wa Jal? Because that's a message I think we need to send to our brothers and sisters, especially the young ones. We wait for something to strike us in our life, we wait for a calamity, then we turn to Allah Azza wa Jal. In your case, Alhamdulillah, I've known you ever since you were young, you were praying, you were always uh, obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. But a lot of people don't pray and they don't even have that connection to Allah Azza wa Jal. When do they connect? When they are struck with a calamity. So what would you give an advice to people like myself and advice to those who are sleeping and that are negligent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then it's only that time where Allah Azza wa Jal tests them or something, they turn back to Allah. What would you say to someone like him? Well, it's very sad that the brothers and sisters and, and a lot of our community and you know, wait till a doctor or, or whoever tells them that they're sick or they haven't got long to live. But in reality, you know, we should be doing this from, from when we were born. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to, to pray, to, to fast, to worship Him. But everyone pretty much thinks and oh, they've got a long time to live. When we get older, we'll go to Hajj, repent. But it doesn't work that way, Allah. No. I think that's a very important point that we want to also elaborate on. That uh, I don't need someone to tell me that you've got this duration, this period of time for you to live. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me, you don't know when you're going to die or you don't know when, how long you're going to live for. I could die tonight, even though I'm healthy and I could stay living for another 2, 2 to 30 or even 50 years, even though I've been diagnosed, whatever illness it is. So it's important for us not to wait for that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests me for me to return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. I need to be always connected with Allah Azza wa Jal regardless. It's not about that moment that I need to experience something in my life or encounter something that's tough in my life for me to return back to Allah. I need to always to be with Allah Azza wa Jal. As you mentioned, from the moment that I'm born, I need to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from the moment I reach the age of uh, awareness and understanding in this world, I need to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Brother Ali, tell me about your new journey. You've uh, now engaged and you've embarked on this humanitarian journey that you went to Africa, you went to Togo, and mashallah, you seem to be very happy, a lot more happier than being in Greenacre. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's a, like you could see it, the smile on your face, and even I saw you after that. And uh, just two days ago, you, Mahmoud, and I were sitting down and I asked you about Tiger and one of the things that you mentioned, you said, I can't wait for me to go back there. And I've heard about Tiger. Like, I've heard about Tiger, how backward it is and uh, how undeveloped it is. But subhanAllah, what made you say connected to a place which is so undeveloped? It's just a community there that something we lack here is, is brotherhood and sisterhood. And he, up there, they all stick together. They all want one community, one building, like if one person gets hurt, the whole community gets hurt. So they all help each other. They've got, at the moment, they've got places like um, houses they're building for widows. They've got massages going, they've got wells going. And everyone's hands on there. And even the ladies, we've got videos of ladies laying bricks with babies on their back. So they're, they're all stuck together, they're all stick firm and they just like helping each other. And did you feel that brotherhood even though you're coming from all the way from Australia, from Dunham, does they always say to us? Well as soon as I got there I felt the brotherhood because they haven't seen people with uh, this kind of skin before Yeah. and they they, look, they love the Prophet that much so I tell them that just because I've, I've got the same colour skin they always used to hug me and, and just want to touch my skin just so they can feel a piece of the process and I'm sure your main intention that you went there is because you wanted to change people's lives did you see that we changed uh, we changed a lot of people's lives there's a couple of videos that a whole community that used to be um, uh, statue worshippers became Muslim um, but there's people like the Red Cross that have been to these places and they're building you know, churches and stuff like that and subhanAllah, we're going in there slowly, slowly and changing all that. No. So tell us more about your future projects. Now you've got an organization that's called uh, Muslims Around the World Project. Tell us more about this project. What's this project about? Well, this is when I came back from Africa. I was sitting with my wife and I just decided to, to create a little organization to, 
to keep things going up in Africa. And then subhanAllah, Allah, and He blessed and He's given a, a lot of barakats. It's grown out of proportion and it's, it's grown pretty quick. Um, but the plan is to, to split split the money into five different different things. One is to build wells. One is to build um, orphanages for for the for the orphans. One is to build places for the widows. Another one's for masjid, and another one's for schools. Inshallah. Inshallah. And how far are you with this project now? And at the moment, I've just started for myself. When I went there, I built a masjid and a and a school, but. I thought to myself, you know, when I get back there, I can also help the community by taking their money up there and doing something for the community. Inshallah, have you initiated anything so far? Have you built in all those orphanages, those masajid? Inshallah, when, when the time of end, end of December, when I get back there, my masjid and, and madrasa will be finished, inshallah. Inshallah, and uh, you've really started with this project? Yeah, my project. Under this organization, MATW. MashaAllah. And is there a website or Facebook for this uh, just, project? Just Facebook and Instagram. MashaAllah. JazakAllah khair. So, now, look, and what are your plans for the future? And by the way, and forgive me for being too blunt about this, I know sometimes if I was diagnosed with such illness that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a quick recovery from it, uh, I'll start thinking, you know, I've got very short space of time to live. I don't have long to live. But the truth is, that's not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that determines how long you live and how long I live. It's not about what I've been diagnosed with, what, what you've been diagnosed with. And uh, one thing that I would like, and I'm sure, mashallah, that's something that you see on your face, you don't really look at that. Well, I've got two months to live, two years to live. I'll live as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to live, whether I'm healthy or not healthy. So at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that decrees how long I live for, not the doctor uh, decrees how long I live for, or what the specialist says to me. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to Abdullah ibn Abbas, and remember if the entire world gets together to try and harm you, no one can harm you with anything unless Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala decreed upon you. And if this whole world gets together to benefit you with something, no one can benefit you with anything unless Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala decreed upon you. But what are your plans for the future? So moving from here, and then, alhamdulillah, since you've inspired a lot of people around the world, and here, look, mashallah, all these brothers and sisters came to listen to you because they've been inspired by the beautiful words and your story that uh, we've just played and watched. So what are your plans for the future? My plans, inshallah, if Allah keeps me alive, my plans are just to keep going with the, the plans in Africa and inshallah moving to another country from there after that, after we finish that first project, moving to another country, doing another project and just keep going. From country to country, inshallah. So you want to be predominantly working in a humanitarian work? Inshallah. And as that, you use that as a platform for the da'wah, inshallah. 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 And uh, how do you find people's response to you? Like, do you see that people really being affected when you speak to them and that? Well, alhamdulillah, you know, from when we came back, it's been probably about two weeks. Yeah, a lot of the Facebook people, just from Facebook, we've raised about $100,000. MashaAllah. Um, from the UK and stuff like that, we've raised another about twenty thousand dollars. So it's it's pretty good. It's working pretty good. Alhamdulillah, that's good. And what would your message be to the brothers and sisters here? Like someone in your position, I know a lot of people here are waiting for you to say something to them. What would your advice be to them? A young brother born and raised in Australia, lived a comfortable life, and then Subhanallah, suddenly he was diagnosed with this illness, and now he's in a position where Alhamdulillah he. Not, I don't want to say he changed his life, but he bettered his life, alhamdulillah, because your life was already good from before with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've known you, I could uh, give a testimonial on this. But uh, alhamdulillah, you bettered your life towards that. Well, what would your advice be to someone like myself, to the brothers and sisters who are here tonight, to those who are watching you, what would you say to them? What would your advice be to them? Final advice, something that you want to let from, you, from the bottom of your heart to them, for them to ponder and contemplate on. Well, the only thing that I believe, inshallah, that's, that's kept me healthy and making me and he take the right path is, is the riddle of the mum and dad. So, mm. any, I've, I'm the, probably the only one in the family out of eight kids that whatever my parents tell me, I, I do it. Um, and I kiss their feet pretty much. 
So they're the only ones that are keeping me going at the moment, by the will of Allah, obviously, first. But um, just be good to your parents. Wallah, yani, sometimes we don't, we don't think about it, but a lot of the words we tell our parents, and we don't even tell them we love them. Like, it's, it's very, like, it's disappointing, you know what I mean? They've raised us, they've, they've taken care of us all this time. Subhanallah, a lot of us get married, we forget about our parents, we start going to the in-laws instead. Well, like the, the parents are the only, yani, one of the main keys that are going to get you into paradise. And um, to keep you strong in this dunya, yani. Apart from salah and siyam and all that stuff, well, be, be good to your parents. And never, make, let, never let them be angry or sleep angry with you, inshallah. So after this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted you with, not only got closer to Allah, but you even got closer to your parents. Oh, I've been always close to my parents. Alhamdulillah, closer, closer. Closer. I don't want to put you in trouble. Allah ta'ala. Okay? So Alhamdulillah, you feel like you're a lot more closer to them. And uh, you mentioned something, Wallah, that's uh, very inspirational that sometimes we take them for granted. Yes. Like maybe some, I would ask that, I don't want a response from you, but I'll ask myself and every single brother and sister here, when was it last that you went up to your parents and said to them, I love you? Oh, I'm too shy. Now I'm too shy. When it comes to other things, I'm not shy. When it comes to screaming at your parents and going up at your parents, you're not shy. But when it comes to going to your parents and saying to them, Mama, Dad, I love you, now everyone, subhanAllah, suddenly just becomes shy. When it comes yeah. to the arus, you get a atle feel like that. You get it? It doesn't stop at atle these days. Alhamdulillah. So, that's a very important advice that uh, we need to keep in mind the importance of uh, getting closer to our parents because we do not appreciate things until sometimes we start losing them or we think we're going to lose them. And we do not appreciate our religion until we start realizing that, you know what, I'm losing my religion or we don't appreciate life until we start feeling that I'm losing life. But uh, my brothers and my sisters, if there's something that I want to learn out of this is that, alhamdulillah, at the end of the day, we'll all be tested. The brother here, he's been tested with a CV test, but mashallah, he's taken it strongly. He's taken it with full brave, bravery. He's taken it with full bravery, jazawallah khair. And that's something to me, that's a very, very important inspiration for me. And, uh, but he's tested with a test, you are probably tested with another test. What's your reaction towards this test? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he went past a an old woman that was she was grieving over the death of his son. So Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam stood beside her and he said to her, "Calm down, relax." So she told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Leave me alone. You don't know what I'm going through." So the Sahaba saw how this old woman spoke to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they came up to her and admonished her and told her off. Oh, how could you or how dare you speak to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam like this? So she went and looked for the Prophet والسلام, and she apologized to the Prophet in which the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, accepted the apology. Then the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says something to her, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى That patience is your reaction at the very beginning. How do you react when you are struck with that calamity? What's your reaction? Is your action going to be, no, I don't deserve it, why this, he doesn't deserve it, this, that? Then inshallah I'm going to be patient. No, no, no. إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to see your reaction at the very beginning. When you are hit with that calamity, what's your reaction going to be? And uh, when you know about this, what are you going to say? And one of the things that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, he says, that if you are struck or hit with a calamity, is to say, إِنَّ لِلَّهُ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ لَجْعُونَ We are to Allah, we shall all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's something that we also re- uh, should learn from. Now my brothers and my sisters, if there's something that I want to learn from, that I've been tested, and every single one of us has been tested, are you taking that test as a gift, like the brother t- took this test as a gift? Or are you taking it like a curse? Because a lot of the times people take it like a curse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ghadab alay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry from me, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed me with this illness, or Allah cursed me with this calamity. How do you look at that test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you? Are you taking it as a gift, or are you taking it as a curse. As a believer, I take it as a gift. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him to gift him. Because Allah azza wa wants to wash away his sins and Allah azza wa wants to elevate his position. And I'm sure, brother, you feel a lot more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a question. Do you feel a lot more closer to Allah azza wa Earlier you said that you saw things that you probably never seen before. 
do you feel like after this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted you, do you feel like you've been elevated to Allah? Do you feel a lot more connection with Allah? Well, like you said before, uh, just to add to that question when you asked me, when I found out first about my cancer, well, I, the first thing that came to my mind was, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Alhamdulillah. So, at the moment, well, I feel very close to Allah from, from the projects and from the people that He's, alhamdulillah, you know, inspiring people through me and stuff like that. Um, and I've had a lot of people on Facebook telling me, uh, we put on a hijab because because of the story. We started praying because of the story. I even had a brother from the UK that was about to commit suicide the next day, and um, like he changed his view because of this story. Subhanallah. Tell us more about that. Like, what exactly happened here? Well, he's he's, he's a bit sick, and um, I think he's got ADD, and his parents and his brothers and his school colleagues all laugh at him and. And, and make jokes about it, about his sickness. So he moved out of the house, he lives on the street. And um, I don't know how he got in contact with me, but he did. And SubhanAllah, he, he, Allah showed him this video and it inspired him and, and it changed his views on, on things. And he started praying and, and then... SubhanAllah. So not only are you changing people's life through humanitarian work, but you're also changing people's life through the da'wah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. And I'm sure that's why you're here tonight. And I'm sure that we've uh, arranged and organized this event tonight because we want to make a change in people's life. And I hope that out of this interview, inshallah, what the brothers and sisters had watched, that, that we really do make a change in our life. But when we say make a change in our life, we don't have to take it in that negative connotation that I want to change my life because I'm bad, I want to become good. No, I could be good, but I want to be better. Like yourself, alhamdulillah, you've always been praying, you've always been involved in the da'wah, attending the masajah, reading the Qur'an and Kareem. But the change that you made in your life is that you made better things in your life. You've taken that step, alhamdulillah. And now you're engaged in humanitarian work. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, he says, Dawul mardakum bis sadaqat. That try and cure your ill by donating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And mashallah, you are now part of this uh, honorable project that you are going around the world, especially in Africa and uh, collecting money to make some changes in people's lives. And uh, I know that next Thursday you've got a fundraising dinner. Yeah, next Thursday, inshallah, the third. MashaAllah, and I remember sitting down with Brother Mahmoud Ismail, we sat down together and he was just uh, talking to me about it and was saying that he wants to hold it. At, initially he wanted to invite 300 people, then the next day, after you've advertised, you had about 500 people. Yeah, it got sold out the first day, so we had to upgrade to Riaz. Renaissance. Renaissance. No, I'm struggling pronouncing that too. Yeah. We so it's to good that it came we out of here, not me. <laughs> yeah. No. And alhamdulillah, how many people are you expecting on that night? At the moment, 1,600 people, 1,000 men and 600 ladies. MashaAllah. And that's going to be next Thursday. Next Thursday. 3rd of December. Starts at 7 p.m. 7.30, I believe. We're going to be praying Maghrib there, yes? Yeah. So people will be praying, go, uh, you stick to 7 because people are going to rock up at 7.30. So, okay, expect people to pray their Salat al-Maghrib, inshallah. And what's the aim of this fundraising dinner? Give us more of an insight of it. Well, the aim is to raise as much money as possible and to build as much projects in, in Togo as possible for the Muslims and to, to change a lot, of, a lot more Muslims and convert people up, up there. I have to say, this fundraising dinner that, inshallah, you're a part of and you're organizing, I have to say, it's the quickest and the fastest fundraising dinner that I've ever experienced. In less than one week, been sold out. In less than two days, been organized. And I have to say, mashallah, this is the barakah. And this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance, inshallah, that when Allah azza wa jalla wants an honorable work and an honorable initiative and project to succeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes and paves the way for it. So inshallah next week you aim to have 1,600 brothers and sisters at the Renaissance. Got it? Did it right. <laughs> Don't ask me to pronounce it again. Okay, and inshallah the aim is to collect for this organization, MATW, Muslims Around the World Project. And the, the money you're going to collect, you're going to go and distribute it across uh, into, Africa inshallah. Into five ways, the ways I said. Jazakallah, like remind us of those five ways. Schools, masajid, houses for orphans. Houses for widows and wells, inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, inshallah, we'd like to remind the brothers and sisters that tickets, if there are, if they're still uh, there, okay, to see 
the brother here with the red beard, oh, I've got a lot of sympathy with people like yourself. Okay? And one of the sisters has tickets and shit. Okay, so we've got brothers and sisters now are selling tickets. So if you're interested in attending the fundraising dinner and to be part of it, at least the money, you've got the brother here, inshallah. And you've got sisters that are selling tickets for next week's fundraising dinner. And the aim is to collect the money and inshallah to distribute it to those five uh, avenues that you mentioned in Africa. Uh, brother uh, Ali, Jazakallah Khair, as a simple and humble contribution from the Ummah, inshallah. I uh, will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention that Allah gives you recovery. Because bi ibnillah ta'ala, bi ibnillah, bi ibnillah, I am very, very optimistic with the hard work that you are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you shifa. And I look forward to that moment that Allah Azza wa Jal gives you that shifa and you come and you say, Shaykh, Alhamdulillah, I'm no longer diagnosed with the illness, Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.